The conviction that there is hidden information in the Bible, especially in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, is an old rabbinic traditional belief. There has been much recent, well-publicized research by many different reputable mathematicians and Bible scholars in the pursuit of this possibility. There were many Jewish sages and Christian scholars. One of the most prominent among the Christian scholars is Sir Isaac Newton, who worked extensively on this theory. They were convinced that there is hidden information in the Bible. But the way this information could be retrieved had remained unclear. Rabbi Wiseman was the first to establish the general rules for what is today's highly publicized Bible code research. But there is an indisputable code system, or rather a method of encoding, used in the plain text of the Bible by the biblical author Jeremiah. This code has been known about for ages, for thousands of years. Jeremiah the prophet uses this code in his book in chapter 25 verse 26 and chapter 51 verse 41. Jeremiah gives a strange name to the king of Babylon, calling him the king of Shishak. The prophet was concealing the meaning of his prediction from all but the initiated. He did this by a specific placement of the Hebrew alphabet. So in place of using the second and twelfth letters of the Hebrew alphabet from the beginning to form the word Babylon, he wrote the second and twelfth letters of the Hebrew alphabet from the end to form the word Shishak. In order for this code to be interpreted, Jeremiah had to have a very distinctive placement of the Hebrew alphabet as follows. The alphabet is arranged in this particular manner. The upper row of letters goes from left to right. The bottom row of letters goes in the opposite direction. Each row is a mirror image of the other one in relation to the middle of the alphabet. Notice that this arrangement of letters for the encoding process used in the Bible by Jeremiah is strangely similar to the double helix appearance of DNA, the code of life for all living things. Notice also that the sum of the numbers of the letters standing in any one column in Jeremiah's arrangement of the Hebrew alphabet is constant in all of the columns. The sum of the numbers is 23. This number 23 is immediately intriguing because it matches exactly the number of the chromosomes in the human reproductive cell. Additionally, the number 23 is a result of simply adding a single unit to the total number of the letters in the Hebrew alphabet, which is 22. In the same way, the set of 23 chromosomes in a human sex cell consists of 22 non-sex chromosomes, which are identical in both male and female cells. And like the Hebrew alphabet code, one additional unit, a sex chromosome, completes the code. These are the famous X and Y chromosomes, characteristic for the female and male respectively. In the non-sex cells, males have an X and Y chromosome, while females have two X chromosomes. This fact has a peculiar relation to the biblical story of the creation of man and woman. Indeed, both sexes possess at least one X chromosome, so its presence does not define sex essentially. It defines the sex in combination with another X or Y chromosome only. Therefore, males bear the feminine in them, but on the other hand, females do not contain maleness because they do not have a Y chromosome. Therefore, from a genetic point of view, the creation of the first woman entirely out of a man's body is possible, while the creation of a man out of a woman's body is genetically impossible unless a Y chromosome is added from outside. There is also another confirmation of the Bible story obtained recently. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 20, Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Evidently what Adam meant was that every human being descends in his or her maternal line from a single woman, Eve, the first created woman. DNA exists not in the chromosomes in the cell nuclei only, but also 
in small organelles called mitochondria. They are inherited exclusively from the mother. Now scientists have proven from DNA research that all human beings have descended from one woman. Thanks to scientific research, we are now able to decode the message found in DNA. It is the message of life spoken in every living creature on our planet. From this, one might be prompted to ask, a message of life from where? Or more specifically, a message from whom? <laughs> 